Hi, I'm PJ Marks, owner of the Wakeboard Camp. I opened the camp in 1996 with the sole purpose of creating the best place in the world to teach people how to wakeboard better. Since then, we've spent thousands of hours teaching students of all ages and abilities. Our basic philosophy has always been that no matter what trick you're doing, the same basic skills and physics apply. As a result of this philosophy, we've broken tricks down into their most basic parts and developed exercises to simplify the learning process. At first, many of these exercises seem like they would be for beginners only. But if you take the time and examine them, you realize that they can and should be used by every rider regardless of age and ability. This series will teach you just about everything you could ever want to know about the sport of wakeboarding. From choosing your equipment, to driving the boat, to basic skills, all the way through executing the most advanced tricks. For years, people have been asking us to put all this stuff down on tape. Well, we finally feel like we know enough about the sport to write the book on wakeboarding instruction. So here it is, the book, Instructional DVD Series. Hi, I'm Mike McLenn and I'm here to show you how to get the most out of your DVD. First off, there are multiple audio tracks. Each audio track contains a different coach. To toggle between these different audio tracks, you need to press the audio button on your DVD player or your DVD remote control. Next, you'll see several abbreviations that we use on this DVD and throughout the book instructional series. Here's a list of some of the abbreviations you'll encounter from here on out. Finally, you'll notice one of three different edging position icons will be in the bottom left corner of each trick's chapter intro. Use these as position starting points during the approach of the trick to help you better your pop at the wake. Hi. I'm Kyle Schmidt, head coach here at the Wakeboard Camp and instructional editor for Wakeboarding Magazine. In this DVD, we're going to spend a lot of time with each of the eight base inverts and even show you different variations of the back roll and the tantrum to help you prepare for advanced tricks down the road. We'll also use the trampoline a lot in this video to show you how to train on land. It's a great tool used to dial in your rotations and build muscle memory through repetition, but it's very dangerous. We recommend that you seek the assistance of a certified trampoline or gymnastics coach who has the proper equipment to help you flip safely and without injury. So be safe and join us as we thoroughly break down each invert in this Base Inverts DVD of the book Wakeboard Instructional Series. For six of the eight base inverts, you will use a progressive edge to create line tension. This line tension or load on the line is what is used to catapult you in the air to rotate. Much like a catapult, you pull it back and you release it forward. These base inverts are called load and release inverts. The first thing that I'd like to talk about before we actually get into the, the eight base inverts is loading and releasing. And this is a skill that you need to learn to actually be able to catapult yourself into the air um, on a wakeboard. Basically what you're doing is you're putting a lot of line tension on the rope and a lot of pressure on your edge to create a sweeping motion that actually projects you upward in the air and sweeps your body into a rotation at the same time. Basically you have water pushing on your board hard enough to sweep the board out from underneath you and the line is tight enough to actually yank your body forward and this creates the flipping motion. If you think about it, if you relate it to a catapult, a catapult, when you pull it back and release it forward, the catapult actually travels upward before it actually moves forward. And that's kind of what you want to do with your body. You want to lean back with your shoulders like you would with a catapult and then actually release it forward so your body is casted upward into the air, then forward into the rotation. As you can see here, I lean back with my shoulders to create a lot of line tension and pressure on my edge. And then I release it and let my body come forward into the flip. But at the same time, my body is actually traveling upward and the rope is pulling me forward while the water is pushing the board out from underneath me and sweeping it backwards into the rotation. You lead your rotation with your head and shoulders and that's what distinguishes the trick you're gonna do in the load and release family. A good way to learn this technique is to take the wake out of the picture. So what you can do is you can actually edge outside the wakes and slow the boat down about three miles per hour slower than normal. 
from there you're going to bounce on the rope and get the you know the bungee effect on the rope. Basically you're going to do this with you know a tall position and you're just going to lean back with your shoulders and let the rope actually pull you forward and you're going to do this back and forth. And it's it's just a little bouncing motion that gives you you know the the catapult motion that you're going to use to do the flips. Taking the wake out of the picture really lets the rider know how the skill works and how you know wakeboarding really works. Each one of the load and release families have the same exact motion when you're loading up the line and releasing the trick. You're going to load the trick back and then you're going to release your upper body forward towards the boat. As you're coming forward, that's when you distinguish the rotation by rotating your head and shoulders depending on what rotation you're going to do. From left to right, you have each of the families, back roll, front flip, and rally. Each trick has the same exact motion at first. You load back, you release forward, then direct the rotation with your head and shoulders. The heel side back roll is the first invert that we'll be going over in the load and release section of this DVD. It's probably the first invert you're going to try due to its close relation to the heel side wake jump. There are two types of back rolls. Let's start with the progressive back roll. The first flip that you'll probably learn on a wakeboard is a back roll. And there's two different ways you can actually do a back roll. There's a progressive back roll and a Mexican back roll. A progressive back roll is a side flip on the trampoline. So basically what you want to learn is a cartwheel style flip on the trampoline where you flip to the right in the opposite direction that you would be traveling on the water. So when you push off the trampoline, you want to push your hips one way and your shoulders in the opposite direction, and that's what's going to give you the flipping rotation. As you leave the trampoline, turn your head over your front shoulder to start the back row rotation, and what this does is it makes your head the lead part of the rotation so you can spot your landing. Here you can see how early I spot my landing so I can land soft and back against the rope. Learning tricks on the trampoline really engraves the, the rotations into your muscle memory so it's a smart step to take. When you're ready to take it to the wake you want to use a progressive edge for this trick. It's important to really drift at first and then exert all your energy on your edge in the trough of the wake. So drift really slow and then load the line at the wake and that will give you the catapulting motion. Again, it helps to try this trick without the wake, so you really learn how to initiate the rotation. A lot of people think that this trick should be thrown. I like to say you get thrown on this trick. You don't actually throw the trick. If you load the line correctly and you have the right body position, when you leave the wake, the wake and the pressure on your edge and rope should actually push your, push your body into the rotation. All you should have to do is lead it with your head and shoulders. Here we have a shot of the back roll from the chase boat, which is another boat and is directly from the side, and a shot of the boat, and a shot of the back roll directly from the boat. This gives you two different perspectives and it allows you to see how the rotation naturally goes away from the boat. Keep an eye on the tip of the board. Watch the tip of the board. As you're edging into the wake, the water is actually wanting to push the board away from the boat. So what you're going to do is you're just going to let this happen naturally by leading it with your head and shoulders. So at the trough of the wake, load up hard so the pressure on the board increases, and then make sure you stand tall through the lip of the wake. Having a tall position for this trick really gives you the air you need to complete the rotation, as well as enough speed in the rotation. I see a lot of people squat down too far on this trick, and they can't figure out why they, they're not getting enough pop to clear the wakes and finish the rotation. Another bad habit when people try the back roll is they'll edge in tall. When they leave the wake, they'll tuck into the trick. You actually want to stand taller during the rotation or throughout the whole rotation of this trick. Um, that's kind of how the trick works best, a nice tall rotation. After you initiate the rotation, you're going to want to lead the rotation with your head and shoulders, and then you'll be able to spot your landing really early. As you spot your landing, it helps to move the handle out towards the flats on your landing side to stop your rotation. Because the natural rotation of a back roll naturally wants to actually turn a frontside 180. 
So you have to resist this rotation by moving the handle out towards the flats. When you're ready to grab your first back rolls, you're going to want to use more, a little more of a seated position. What this will do is it will give you a little bit more push at the wake so you can go straighter up and have the time to grab the board. You want to use the same edging technique and don't give quite as much edge at the wake because you don't want your line tension quite as high when you're doing a grab for a back roll. The most common grabs are front hand grabs and you'll probably learn the melon grab first for your first grab back rolls. Again, make sure you take the back roll up first then reach for the grab. You want to initiate the rotation with two hands to make sure everything's under control, then grab the board. On the way down, again, move the handle out towards the flats so your body stays in position for the landing. To get a front hand grab on the board, it's going to help to actually bring your front knee up a little bit so it pulls the nose of the board up further than the tail of the board. After you get used to grabbing this trick, you can really hold on to grabs for a really long time and pull them close to your body to make the back row look really stylish. Next we're going to talk about the Mexican back roll. Basically the difference between the Mexican back roll is in the rotation. A uh, progressive back roll is more of a side flip. A Mexican back roll is more of a, a front flip uh, or a front flip that you would do on a trampoline. Your, your upper body actually comes forward towards your toes and you're rolling forward into the trick. One thing that I forgot to say earlier is, is progressive back rolls are more ideal for doing roll to blinds with handle passes on the way down and we call those down roll to blinds. The Mexican back roll is more ideal for, for up roll to blinds or handle passes on the way up. As you leave the wake on this trick, you're going to want to stand tall and use the same progressive edge, but instead of opening your shoulders up towards the sky, you're going to keep your shoulders in the same position and throw your head down towards the water towards your feet. As you can see, both riders take a slow turn and drift and as they get close to the whitewash on the outside of the trough, they begin to edge hard to give them the catapulting motion they need to finish the rotation. As you stand tall through the wake, let your shoulders and head come forward and down towards your feet and let the board come out and let the board go out behind you. This trick is a little harder to spot the landing because your head doesn't open up as soon to spot the landing. So it's going to take a little getting used to and the blind the landing's a little bit more of a blind landing. To stop your rotation, move the handle out towards the flats and this will put you right into the right position so you can edge out of the trick. Remember when you're doing flips, you really want to anticipate your landing edge because that's what helps you land the trick strong and back against the rope. The Mexican back roll is a lot easier to grab with your back hand, as where, whereas the progressive back roll is a lot easier with your front hand. And the reason this is, is because for a progressive back roll, the nose of the board is opening away from the boat and it's turning towards your front hand. Whereas the Mexican back roll, the board is staying closed and all you really have to do, since you're throwing your upper body and head down towards the board, is put your back hand down towards the board and the board will, and the board will be right there to grab. As you can see, the rider takes the trick up 
stands tall, but then sucks his knees up so he can grab the board. Whenever you're grabbing this invert, again, you want to use a little bit more of a seated position so you can use your legs a little bit more at the wake to give you time to grab the board. Next on the list for load and release inverts is the toe side back roll. Now this flip tends to be a little bit harder because riders are usually weak, weaker at their toe side edging than they are at their heel side edging. Stay strong with your position and stick with this trick. Alright, the next trick that we're going to talk about is the toe side back roll. It's smart to start this trick on the trampoline and have really good control of your back layouts. For a toe side back roll, you want to throw your hips forward and your shoulders back, and this resembles a layout on the trampoline without the rope. There's two different kinds of back flips, a back tuck and a back layout, so you definitely want to use a back layout for this trick. When you put the rope in your hands, make sure you turn into the toe side position and you don't cheat the, po and you don't cheat the position on the trampoline. If you turn your body into the toe side position on the trampoline, it'll resemble more of the feeling that you get on the water and a tighter line on the trampoline. As you push off the top of the trampoline, push your hips forward first. You don't want to throw your shoulders back before you push your hips forward because then you'll travel on the trampoline and this is how people fly off the trampoline. Push your hips forward, then your shoulders back. It's basically a one minus one effect. Since your hips are going forward, you have momentum going forward, so you have to counter that with momentum going backwards, and that's your shoulders. So hips forward, shoulders back, and that's what initiates your rotation. When you're ready to take it to the water, you're gonna use the progressive edge and a tall position again to initiate this trick. This trick is more about position at the wake. If you squat down too much, you'll go flat, and you won't have enough pressure on your edge to help you initiate and complete the rotation. In the trough of the wake, I tell a lot of riders to give a nice pull down their back arm and what this does is it loads the line and gives you that extra oomph at the wake to really push the board out behind you so you can complete the rotation. The hardest thing about this trick is actually staying tall throughout your edge. A lot of people they'll start tall but when they get close to the trough they squat down and what this does is it decreases the leverage on the line and makes it really difficult to pop the trick. So make sure you stay tall and just use the leverage on the line and your tall position to pop the trick. Another thing you might want to try is looking a little further away from the boat at the wake than you would normally look when you do wake jumps or any other tricks. What this does is it adjusts your body position so you lean down the rope more and the tip of the board goes away from the wake as well. After you leave the wake, you're going to push your hips forward up into the air and stand really tall. You also want to keep two hands on the handle for the first half of the rotation. What this does is it solidifies having a nice strong edge and a nice strong pop and it gives you control in the air. So on the way down, you can brake with one hand and then concentrate on landing over your toes. For this trick, most importantly, Move the handle back towards the wake so you stay in the twisted toe side position and then edge out of the trick.
Toe side back roll is a cool trick to grab and the grabs are becoming a little more technical these days. Here we have Keith Lyman doing a, a crail grab. During this grab you have to twist your body a little more. Whenever you're going to grab the board for this trick, you just want to add a touch of bend in your knees as you're approaching the wake so you can push a little bit with your legs. This will help you get a little extra pop and a little bit more of a straight up rotation to help you pull your knees in and actually grab the board. Whenever you're grabbing the board on this trick, it's more of a back tuck style of rotation. You're not throwing your hips forward as much and your shoulders back. You're just going to stand tall and then actually pull your knees in hard to your chest and that's what actually initiates the rotation and pulls the board in close enough to get the grab. As you can see here in this shot, at the wake, for the grab version, Keith is a little bit more straighter up and pulling his knees in will initiate the rotation, whereas without the grab, I have a taller position and my shoulders are further back because I'm pushing my hips forward and my shoulders back to initiate the rotation without the grab. After you grab the board, both tricks will have the same position on the landing. You'll be able to spot the landing and then lean over your toes with one hand to edge outward away from the wake. Again, for the grab version of the trick, use a back tuck style rotation instead of a layout rotation. The heel side front flip is a cartwheel style invert that rotates from tip to tip instead of from rail to rail. When doing a heel side front flip, it's important not to let your back shoulder open away from the boat. If you do this, it'll look more like a two-handed tantrum and it'll be labeled a frantrum. We're going to show you some tricks on how to dial in the perfect front flip rotation. All right, the next family of tricks that we're going to talk about is, in the load and release family is the front flip. The front flip is a side flip in the opposite direction of the progressive back roll that we discussed earlier. For this flip, you're actually going to flip to the side in the direction you're traveling. So what you're going to do is you're going to throw your hips away from the direction you're traveling and your front shoulder forward and a little bit towards the boat so you get that forward and side flipping rotation. One mistake that people make on this trick is they let their back shoulder open up and it gives them more of a tantrum or backflip style rotation. You want to make sure your front shoulder comes forward so you really solidify the front flip rotation. For the front flip, you definitely want to flip towards the boat. You don't want to flip directly to the side. For this trick, you're going to use a progressive edge. You're going to drift the same way you would for a back roll or any other progressive trick, and then you're going to load the line through the wake. As you get to the wake, you really have to bring your front knee up to your chest so the board goes straight up and your body is projected straight upward. After you bring your knee up, you're going to want to bring your shoulder up as well so you go straight up off the top of the wake. And then right after you leave the wake, you're going to take your front shoulder and throw it straight down towards the water. Make sure you keep your back shoulder closed so you have a front flip rotation and not a tantrumy or a frantrum rotation. As you can see here from the side, the rider looks like he's rotating towards the boat. His shoulders are moving forward towards the boat and his back shoulder is staying closed while he's moving across the back of the boat. 
That's where a lot of people make their mistakes. Since the, since the trick is moving across the back of the boat, they, flint, they think they have to flip directly to the side, and that's where they mess up with their pop and rotation. Another bad habit is edging too hard on the turn. And what this does is it makes the rider go flat. If you go flat at the wake on this trick, you'll get tripped and you'll have more of a tantrum rotation or backflip rotation. So make sure you're patient and you drift for the first half of the edge and then really dig as you get to the foam right outside the trough. At the wake, you want to make sure you stand tall, release your upper body forward, and make sure your back shoulder's closed. It will also help to move the handle towards your back hip so your body is able to get in front of the rope so you can rotate towards the boat. On the way down, look straight down towards the water, towards your feet, so you can spot your landing, lean back against the rope, and edge out of the trick. To help yourself stay in the front flip position, you might want to break with one hand and move the handle out towards the flats so you don't spin sideways and butt check the trick. In this part of the section, we're going to talk about the frantrum, and this is a nickname given to the front flip when someone does it incorrectly. As you can see here, my back shoulder opens up away from the boat, and that's what makes the rotation look different than the actual front flip rotation. Here we have a comparison between the front flip on the left and the frantrum on the right. Basically, you can see the difference is all on the back shoulder. As the rider leaves the wake, his back shoulder closes forward towards the boat. For the frantrum, the rider's shoulder opens away from the boat, and usually the rider will have a flatter edge at the wake. So make sure you flip towards the boat and close that back shoulder. Front flips are commonly done with rear hand grabs, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to do the first half of the front flip rotation, then reach down and grab the board on the way down from the flip. You can do the front flip with a front hand rotation, but I think it's a lot easier to do with a backhand rotation so you don't have to land crossed up with the front hand off the handle because the rope has a tendency to open you up and you'll slide out and catch your front edge. So make sure you take the trick up with two hands on the handle for the, fir for the whole first half of the rotation. Then after you gain control in the air and you're on your way down, you can drop your backhand and reach down for a stalefish grab or even a tail grab. Any backhand grab is pretty easy to do on a front flip. Be careful when you're grabbing the front flip with your backhand because a lot of riders let their back shoulder open up and this makes the trick look more like a grab tantrum. Next we're going to talk about the toe side front flip. The toe side front flip lots of times is confused with a toe side front roll. They're actually two very different things. A toe side front roll, you come into the wake toe side and you actually do a forwards flip, basically the same thing as a forward flip on a trampoline. Where a toe side front flip, you come in on your toe side edge and just like the heel side front flip, you raise your lead knee and flip over it, kind of sideways. It's a really technical trick, a really hard trick, and right now we're getting ready to show you how to master the toe side front flip. Next on the list in the load and release family is the toe side front flip, which is the opposite edge from the heel side front flip. 
This is probably one of the hardest of the eight base inverts because of its twisted position and it's just really hard to get the uh, toe side front flip position right in the air. A lot of people do front rolls when they try this trick and this is a comparison between the rotations of the toe side front roll and the toe side front flip. You're going to want to take this trick to the trampoline first just to make sure you have the rotation correct and you're actually flipping towards the boat. After you leave the wake or initiate the rotation on the trampoline, move the handle behind you as if you were going to pass the handle behind your back and this will allow you to stay twisted but cartwheel into the rotation. Remember, front flips are a tip to tip rotation, not a rail to rail rotation. You're traveling end over end and it's important to keep the board in line with the direction that you're flipping. The toe side front flip is a really hard rotation to spot because your board is coming down first and your head is coming down last. So it helps to look away from the boat and look out towards the shoreline to spot your landing. When you land, break at the waist and bend over so you can edge out of the trick. When you're ready to take this trick to the wake, it helps to keep your shoulders a little more open towards the wake. And what this will do is it'll let you, and what this will do is it'll, it'll force you to flip towards the boat. If you flip across the wake, you'll do more of a front roll. The other thing that you're gonna wanna try to do is, I try to, to get people to do a backside air, or shifty backside with their board. And what this does is it keeps the board in the toe side front flip position. This is a really tough rotation. So make sure you start slow on your edge and edge only at the wake. As you leave the wake, give a nice tug on the rope to pull yourself towards the boat so you can rotate towards the boat and over the tip of the board. So make sure you turn slow, be patient, and start a nice slow drifting edge. Try to leave your arms out and the handle relaxed so that way when you get to the trough you can lean a little bit more but then pull yourself forward into the rotation. As you get to the bottom of the wake, try to stand a little heavy on your back foot so you can cast yourself upward. Then when you leave the top of the wake, bring your front leg up. As you're pulling on the handle, you'll be able to pull yourself forward and into the front flip rotation. On the way down, drop your back hand and look away from shore so you can spot your landing and anticipate your landing edge so you can edge toe side out towards the flats. We're not even gonna really bother talking about a grab for this trick because not many riders do a grab on the toe side front flip because of the awkward rotation. But if you can pull off a grab on this trick, then you have accomplished a big feat and this'll, this'll be a trick that will really distinguish your riding from someone else's. Next, we're going to talk about the heel side air railing. The air railing is definitely one of the biggest crowd pleasers, but it can also be one of the scariest tricks to learn. We're going to show you some easy tricks to help you get your board out behind you and back under you safely. The last trick that we're going to talk about in the load and release family is the air railing. Um, I've kind of nicknamed this trick the crowd pleaser because everybody just loves this trick. Like if you wakeboard and you're out on the boat, everybody yells out, do a railing, do a railing. So basically, this is a trick that you want to definitely take to the trampoline first. And you're going to want to learn how to get your legs out behind you on the trampoline so you feel more comfortable out on the water stretching out and getting into the laid out or superman position. One tip that helps you on the trampoline is on the bounce that you're going to actually do the railing, jump about a foot forward towards where the rope is connected so you can actually 
get the leverage to push your hips out behind you. Off the bounce, really push your butt out and behind you and into the air. If your butt goes out and your hips go out, then your feet will follow. So don't try to just throw your feet out behind you off the trampoline. Make sure your butt goes first and then your feet will follow. To get the board back underneath you, you're going to push the handle straight down towards the mat or towards the water. And what this does is it creates a hinging motion that actually folds your body back in half and brings your feet down in front of you. You don't have to pull the handle in and it doesn't require a lot of strength. You just have to push the handle straight down towards the water. One good way to learn the rally on the water is to jump on a wake skate and try it off the wake skate. Basically what this does is it decreases the impact of the falls because the board's not connected to your feet. What you want to do is you want to take a wide approach and just charge the wake with a bit more of a seated position so you can jump really high off the wake and push your hips out behind you. On the way down, push the handle down to get your feet in front of you and then pin drop in the water with your feet together. After you're comfortable with the railing on the wake skate, take it to the water. It helps to immediately strap the board on right after you get done doing the wake skate rally because the, because the motion will be engraved in your muscle memory and you'll be comfortable edging hard and out into the flats. For this trick you're going to want to use a progressive edge in a tall position so you have the leverage on the line and the push on your board so the board will be pushed out behind you at the wake. And then on the way down you can see the rider start to push the handle down towards the water. And what this does is it brings your feet back underneath you and in front of you so you can edge out of the trick and lean back against the rope so you have a strong position. Make sure you don't land and try to balance on this trick. You want to land and edge again. Make sure you keep your direction. This is really important. As you can see here, as the rider approaches the wake, his shoulders are back, away from the boat, and the board is out in front of him. But then as he leaves the wake, the board starts traveling underneath him and away from the boat. Remember, at the wake, instead of pushing your hips up like you would on a normal wake jump, you're going to push your hips out behind you. As you edge in, relax your arms, because you don't want to pull with your arms at the wake. You want to just let the handle out and let the board out behind you. Air Rally is a trick that you can really add a lot of grab variations to. The most common is probably the hoochie glide. This is a front hand grab where you grab melon on the board. And when you do this trick, you don't want to take quite as hard of an edge at the, at the Rally part of the trick. You want to make sure you edge a little bit slower with more of a seated position. And what this will do is it will decrease the line tension a little bit and make it a lot easier to grab the board. As you can see here from the side view, the rider actually sits down a little bit more so he can use his legs at the wake. Make sure you take a slow drifting edge and edge progressively and then stand tall through the wake. Whenever you're grabbing this trick, it's important to grab the trick first, then let the board out. If you let the board out first, you'll chase the grab and you'll never be able to reach it. So make sure you reach down for the grab. Once you get the grab, then let the board out behind you. This seems weird to say, grab it first, then let the board out, but this is how the trick works. If you load the line right and you're used to doing railies, you'll naturally let the board out behind you. A lot, of, a lot of people think if they grab the board first, then how's the board going to go out behind them? Trust me, it works, and this is the best way to do it. It's kind of a trick that you play on your mind. If you tell yourself to grab the board first, then you'll actually wait a split second longer to let the board out behind you. As you can see here in the video, it actually looks like I'm grabbing back, but what I'm really trying to do is grab down, and it just naturally happens the way it happens.
On the side, you can actually see the rider's hand come off the handle and move down towards, towards his board. And then as the board travels out behind him, his hand meets the board for the grab. The toe side raley is another invert where you're letting the board drift out behind you. The key to this trick is having the pull across your body, down your back arm, all the way through the top of the wake, and having your hips in front of you before you leave the wake so you can release them away from the boat. The big thing about getting down from a toe side raley is moving the handle really hard back towards the wake on the landing so you can twist your body into the edging position and edge strong out of the trick. Let's go ahead and teach you how to do a toe side raley. Alright, for the toe side air rail, you're going to want to stay really twisted on the trampoline because this is really important in being able to load the line of the wake. What you can do on the trampoline is after you push off the trampoline, you can open up at first to make getting into the rail position a lot easier on the trampoline. Then eventually what you'll learn to do is stay twisted while your body's inverted or your feet are out behind you. You're going to want to use the same technique as you did on the trampoline before with the, the heel side air railing. On the jump that you're actually pushing off the trampoline, make sure that you jump about a foot in front of you towards where the rope is connected. So that way you can push away from the rope and push your hips out behind you. Handle position is key for this trick. So when you're on the trampoline, make sure you stay in the twisted position while you're inverted. But to really stay in the position, move the handle behind you as if you were going to pass it for a backside 180. For this trick, it's really important to have consistent and big toe side jumps because you're going to need a really strong toe side pop and edge for this trick. Another thing that helps is really good pop on your toe side back rolls. The difference between a toe side back roll and a toe side raley is the fact that you're not throwing your head and shoulders back. You're still letting your hips and the board out behind you like you would on a toe side back roll, but your head and shoulders are going to stay upright and facing the boat. To get the board back underneath you, again you're going to push the handle straight towards the water, but this time you're going to add moving the handle back towards the wake to help yourself get into the twisted position for the landing. Really important on this trick, make sure you break with one hand on the landing, move the handle towards the wake and edge to keep your direction. Keeping your direction is kind of like driving a car. If you switch directions really fast, the back end of the car slides out, your tires break free and you begin to slide and you lose control. Same thing happens on the wakeboard. If you edge in one direction and then try to stop in midair or stop when you land, then the board's going to want to turn, the fins are going to lose traction and you're going to slide out. So make sure you keep your direction. Here we have a shot of the tow side railing from the chase boat as well as the rider boat and this shows you a great comparison for the body position. Right here you can see the handle move and this is what really gets yourself into the position for the landing. Right here my chest is over my toes and what this does is it helps me initiate my toe side edge so I can land strong and against the rope. Next you're going to obviously want to grab this trick. What a lot of people do is they learn how to do what we call a bat wing and a bat wing is a toe side rally with an indie grab and this is a backhand grab grabbing in between your feet. Some riders actually learn the indie grab before they learn the toe side rally and they take the route of doing wake to wake indie grabs and letting the board drift out behind them a little bit each time they do the indie grab. This process takes a lot longer than actually learning the toe side rally first. 
The reason people don't learn the toe side rarely first is because they're scared of the trick because of the twisted position and letting the board out behind them. But if you're into taking a few hard falls to get to the grab a lot quicker, then learn the toe side rarely first and take the shorter route. I see probably 80% of the riders learn how to do the bat wing by just doing a wake to wake grab and adding a little drift. And this takes so long. If you take the time and learn the toe side rarely, you'll get to, you'll get to the bat wing a lot quicker. The toe side rally is another trick you can learn on the wake skate. It's a little bit more awkward, but it may decrease a little bit of the pain in learning the toe side rally. So use the wake skate to your advantage. Remember, whenever you're grabbing the board, you want to use a little bit more of a seated position. So bend your knees and sit down towards the water so you can use your legs at the wake. As well as decreasing your edge, you'll decrease the line tension. So when you have one hand on the handle, it'll make grabbing the board a lot more possible and easier. Trip flips are the last two of the eight base inverts, and their edge is completely the opposite of a progressive edge used in the load and release family. The trip flip edge is where you start off hard on the outside and you flatten off closer to the wake, this giving you the tripping motion. So let's get into trip flips. So next we're going to talk about trip flips, and this is the other family of tricks in the eight base inverts. So basically a trip flip edge is an edge totally opposite of the progressive edge. And what this edge does is it trips you at the wake, initiating your rotations. And use this edge for two families of tricks, front rolls and tantrums. The analogy I like to use on this trick is, is a roller skater. Basically, if you think about roller skating, if you were rolling backwards and you hit a curb, you would fall backwards. Well, imagine if you were ready for that falling motion and you bent your knees and you jumped as you were falling. So you have the curb tripping you back, you have your body jumping upward, those two things together create, would create a flipping motion and you probably have enough momentum to actually do a flip on roller skates. Or even like an ice skater, an ice skater doing a backflip on the ice, the ice skater will plant his picks on his ice skates to actually trip himself and then jump upward at the same time and do the backflip. There's a bunch of analogies you can use for this, this motion and another one is a high jumper. A high jumper running up to the mat actually makes this long wide circle and actually squares up to the, the pole to jump over it um, by getting over his toes and projecting his, himself upward. So that's basically what you're going to do with this edge. You're going to start hard on the outside, really edge hard at the beginning, and then flatten off and get back onto your opposite edge so you can get tripped at the wake. For these type of tricks, you're going to use more of a seated position and what this will do is it'll help you get off your edge at the wake. If you're in the tall position, you get too locked into your edges and it's hard to switch edges at the wake. Again, there's two families of flips in the trip flip family and you're going to want to use this for tantrums and front rolls.
Tantrum is the first flip in the trip flip family of inverts. It's one of the easier flips to learn on your wakeboard and probably be either the first or second flip you'll learn. This trick is just a heel side back flip and you have to learn how to switch edges in order to get the pop and the flip from the wake. As we did for the back roll, we're going to actually teach you two different variations of the tantrum. The first one we're going to go over is a back tuck. The back tuck is a flip where you actually jump straight up in the air and you don't flip with your shoulders. When you get in the air, you actually kick yourself in the chest and that kicking motion creates momentum to kick you backward and actually do the rotation. The next rotation we're going to talk about is a back layout rotation. The back layout rotation is all in the hips. You're actually going to throw your hips forward and your head back to actually do the rotation. The reason we're teaching two different variations is because you're going to use those variations for different tricks or different intermediate or advanced inverts. So first we're going to teach you the back tuck variation of the tantrum on the water. When you're on the trampoline it takes a lot of courage to actually not flip with your upper body but then rely on your legs kicking in to actually do the rotation. So really try to over rotate this trick by kicking in too much. Remember, it'll, it'll hurt a lot more to under-rotate the trick, but if you over-rotate, you'll usually land on your back and it won't hurt as much. get to the water you're going to want to use a seated position to help you get off edge. Make sure you're not patient on this edge and do a hard turn at the very beginning. So this way you'll automatically go flat at the wake and you can switch edges to initiate the rotation. So turn really hard and build a big edge, flatten off, let your body come forward, get over your toes and then stand tall through the top of the wake. For this trick you're going to want to square up at the wake and what we mean by this is you're actually going to turn your shoulders away from the boat a little bit so they're in line with the wake. What squaring up does is it helps you switch your edge so you can get tripped by the wake. One of the cool things about the tantrum is since you're throwing your head back and your head leaves the rotation you can spot the water super early in the rotation. It makes landing this trick really easy and this is probably either the first or second flip that you'll actually learn on a wakeboard. For the back tuck, you're going to want to stand tall off the top of the wake and not flip. And then after you get in the air, really yank your knees into the chest, almost kicking yourself in the chest with your knees. And this will initiate the rotation and help you flip. Remember, you can slow down a fast rotation, but it's really hard to speed up a rotation that's too slow. So put a lot of energy into the flip so that way you can open up on the way down and slow down the rotation. Another important tip to think about is make sure you get your back hand off the handle super early and before the trough. This is a one-handed trick. If you hold on with two hands too long, your shoulders will stay facing the boat for too long and the board will go around the back and it'll make you edge too long making the line very tight throughout the rotation. What this does is it stretches you out in the air and it makes landing the trick very difficult. So make sure you split the edge into two halves. The first half is a hard turn. The second half is flat with one hand because it's a one-handed trick. On the way down, make sure you spot your landing in between your feet down towards your toe side edge and then edge away from the wakes to keep your direction. Next we're going to teach you the back layout version of the tantrum. For this variation you're going to have a little bit more line tension on the rope 
and you'll probably get a little more stretched out in the air, so it's going to take a little bit more arm strength and control. You also notice that the board goes a little bit more behind the rider. When you do the layout, you're going to use a little bit more of a progressive edge than you actually would for the tuck version of the tantrum. And the reason why is because you're actually throwing your shoulders back first off the top of the wake instead of going straight up and tucking your knees in. Being a little more progressive on this trick gives you a little bit more pop and force on the board since you're not tucking your feet in. You're actually just throwing your shoulders back and there's not as much momentum thrown into the rotation with your lower body. So the water's going to help you out a little bit more on this trick. Remember, the board's going to go behind you a little bit more so it's going to require more arm strength. When it comes to grabbing the tantrum, you're going to want to use the, the back tuck variation of the tantrum. Whenever you're doing the back tuck variation, you naturally kick yourself in the chest with your knees and this automatically brings the board close enough to grab it. The most common grab for a, the most common grab for a grab tantrum is an indie grab. And basically, you're going to pull your knees into your chest and just reach down in between your feet to grab the board indie. As you can see in this split screen shot, the rider's upper body goes straight up without flipping, whereas without the grab, the body is aimed back into the flipping motion. You really have to tuck your knees in hard and rely on tucking your knees in and tucking to initiate the rotation. For the grab tantrum, you want to make sure that you tuck too hard and rotate too fast so you can grab the board but then open up to slow down your rotation. The toe side front roll is the opposite of a tantrum. Instead of coming in on your heels and switching to your toes, you're going to come in on your toes and switch to your heels to get the trip flip pop from the wake. For this flip, you want to flip straight forward, just like you were doing a front flip on a trampoline. They call it a front roll, but the rotation is more like a, just a standing front flip. Alright, the last trick in the trip flip family is a front roll. and Basically, this is a straight forward front flip on the trampoline. You're going to use your upper body to initiate the trick by throwing it down towards the ground or water. Without the rope in your hands, you can also use your arms to create a lot of momentum to help you flip it first. It's really important to keep the twisted position so you mimic your edge out on the water. As you push hard off the trampoline, throw your head and shoulders straight down off the mat and then look between your feet so you can spot the landing as soon as possible. It helps on this trick to actually look a little bit towards the boat to find your landing because your feet will be in front of you and the board will block your view. So as you can see here in the shot, the riders heads are turned a little bit towards the boat so they can see the water and spot their landing. On the way down, it helps to move the handle back towards the wakes so you turn into the toe side position and you can anticipate your toe side edge so you land strong. 
It's really important to keep your toe side position on the takeoff as well as the landing because this mimics the same feeling that you would feel on the water. For this trick you're going to use the same edge as you would for the tantrum but you're on your toe side instead of your heel side. Edge really aggressively at first, back off your edge and get on your heels so you get tripped by the wake. I like to tell riders to kind of hit the wake stiff on this trick because what it'll do is it'll give them a better position. If you use your legs too much, you don't usually get as much pop as if you kind of stand taller and just hit the wake stiff on your opposite edge. So approach the wake hard, but then back off your edge as you enter the trough of the wake and get over your heel side edge. I kind of use the catapult analogy on this trick as well. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to lean your body forward to edge, but then before you get to the wake, you're going to pull your shoulders back kind of like you would do for a catapult. And what this does is when you get tripped by the wake, the trip actually projects you upward first, then you go forward. The upward, the upward motion first really gives you the pop and the time needed to initiate the rotation or even complete the rotation. So make sure you edge hard, cock your shoulders backwards so you can pull the trigger out the wake and throw your shoulders forward and up into the air. It also helps to make sure you leave your arms relaxed so you can really create a hard edge at the beginning. If you're pulling with your arms, you're basically fighting two forces. Your arms are pulling you forward while you're actually trying to lean back. It's kind of a one minus one theory. Um, and you're canceling out your edge. So make sure you leave your arms relaxed so you can edge really hard. For this trick, you're also going to want to rotate the first half of the trick with two hands, and then on the way down, you can break with one hand so you can get into the twisted toe side body position. But make sure you do the first half of the rotation with two hands so you have control. Your body's going to naturally want to untwist as you leave the wake, so you've got to really fight that rotation by moving the handle back towards the wake. As you can see here, both riders are bent over and broken at the waist so they can anticipate their next edge and edge out of the trick. A common mistake is kicking out of the trick too early and landing back on your heels and landing on your butt and actually sliding out of the trick. So make sure you over rotate the trick and maybe even go out the front on a couple. Another variation of the front roll is, is a trick we call an elephant. An elephant is basically a scarecrow that you're going to bring back to front roll. On this trick, you're going to want to use a really hard edge and take your front roll really hard out into the flats. Here we have a split screen shot of all three tricks. You can see the difference on the front roll. You're actually keeping your toe side position, whereas the elephant, you're actually turning almost all the way to the scarecrow position you see on the right but then you're moving the handle so you can shift your body back to the front roll position. This is a really cool shot because you can really see the comparison in the motions for all three tricks. All three tricks use the same exact edge, the trip flip edge, but the elephant, you're gonna notice that the riders don't trip as much, they don't, come off out, they don't come off their edge as much, and what this does is it keeps the line a little tighter, so when you wanna shift your body back to the front roll position, you have that tension on the line so you have control on the way down. Line tension is a key factor in manipulating your body while you're in the air. So if you have to shift your body or move your body, you need that tension on the line so you can move the handle and twist your body. Dialing in your front roll is really good because it teaches you good habits for scarecrows or front rolls of, or front roll to fakies down the road. A lot of people skip the toe side front roll and then when they try scarecrows, the board travels behind them and they form bad habits and they struggle with their landings. So make sure you take the time to learn the toe side front roll. So after you get your front rolls down, you're going to want to grab the trick. And basically, the front roll grab is easiest with a backhand grab. 
Since you're throwing your body straight forward and down towards the board, your free hand can naturally grab your toe side edge. This is a difficult grab at first because as you rotate, the board is going to want to travel behind you, so you're going to tend to want to chase the grab. You want to use a bit more of a seated position, and you're going to want to tuck more to initiate the rotation rather than throw your shoulders into the rotation. So jump straight up off the wake, and then tuck your knees in towards your chest and kick yourself in the butt to actually initiate the rotation. As you can see, for the grab variation of the front roll, the rider is really bent in half reaching down to grab the board, whereas the rider not grabbing the board is a little bit taller and he can stay taller throughout his rotation. Again, when you're grabbing the board for a toe side front roll, you're going to want to make sure you move the handle towards the wake on the landing to get you into the toe side edging position so you can land strong over your toes and then keep your direction by edging out into the flats. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> back with your shoulders against the rope over your heel side edge. As you see in the clip. <laughs> <laughs> started it premature. Turn it off. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Turn it off for a second. I got thin. <laughs> Switch dance. Switch stance is riding with your opposite foot forward. If you're a left foot forward rider or regular footed, if you took Switch stance is riding with your opposite uh. <laughs> right. Switch stance is riding with your opposite foot forward. If you're a left foot <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Switch stance is when you're riding with your opposite foot forward. Dream of